Have you ever wanted to start your own podcast? I record and publish podcasts on a platform called Spotify for Podcasters, and I absolutely love it. Essentially, you can upload from your phone or computer, and it distributes to every platform that plays podcasts. They support video podcasts, and you can make money on the platform with ads or even podcast subscriptions, something that has made my life so much easier as a podcaster. So if you're interested, I highly recommend you give it a try. You can download the Spotify for Podcast app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started on your podcast today. Welcome to the ChatGPT Podcast. I'm your host, Jaden Schaefer. Each episode, we dive into the latest developments in the exciting field of artificial intelligence, exploring its applications and potential impacts on our daily lives. If you are looking for an innovative and creative community of people using ChatGPT, you need to join our ChatGPT creators community. I'll drop a link in the description to this podcast. We'd love to see you there where we share tips and tricks of what is working in ChatGPT. It's a lot easier than a podcast as you can see screenshots, you can share and comment on things that are currently working. So if this sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the comment. We'd love to have you in the community. Today on the podcast, I want to talk about four stories in AI that are recently breaking. Number one, we know that Sam Altman has appeared before the U.S. Congress and has testified on behalf of OpenAI. The second is that a research piece came out of Microsoft stating they see sparks of artificial general intelligence in ChatGPT4. I want to talk about what that is. And the other one is that Apple has officially entered the AI space, but maybe not in a way that you would expect. So the first thing that is obviously taken up a lot of news over in the States is the fact that the CEO of um, OpenAI, the owner of ChatGPT, Sam Altman, he appeared before Congress. And largely in speaking to Congress, he, uh, you know, watch a clip. Someone asked him, I saw, you know, like how much money he was making uh, from G- from OpenAI. Apparently, he doesn't own any shares in OpenAI anymore, um, but he says he does it because he loves it. That's very interesting. Um, And in addition, throughout the entire thing, he specifically came before the committee and asked that they uh, create more regulations around AI. That was essentially the the purpose of him going and the purpose of his meeting was asking for um, more regulation around AI. He said... My worst fears are that we cause significant um, harm. He said, I think if this technology goes wrong, it can go quite wrong. And we want to be vocal about that. We want to work with the government to prevent that from happening. Uh, Later on, he also said, but we tried to be very clear eyed about the downsize case um, and that we have to mitigate that. So Essentially, he's talking to all of Congress and telling them that he sees a lot of downside in AI. We need government intervention. We need a lot of regulation. He talked about how a lot of jobs have the potential to to be lost, but it's impossible to predict. Um, Overall, he said there will be an impact on jobs. We try to be very clear about that, and I think it will require partnerships between industry and government, but mostly action by government to figure out how we want to mitigate that. I'm optimistic about how great the jobs of the future will be. So, you know, at the same time, he's still saying he believes that uh, that the jobs of the future that are coming from AI are going to be uh, great. Now, I, I wanted to go over some of the um, responses to this whole thing because obviously this is a pretty uh, big news story. Essentially, uh, one person said they know the harm is coming. They're requesting regulation not to reduce harm, but to reduce liability. I thought that was very interesting. Um You can hardly blame the CEO of an AI company that's going before Congress and saying, hey, we need more regulation. When something happens, he can say, look, I was there requesting more regulation. Um, So that is definitely a way that they would be reducing liability, which is an interesting thought. Someone else said there is definitely an ulterior and self-interested motive whenever a corporation requests government regulation for their industry. I can't recall the last time I requested more government regulation for my life. So this is kind of interesting. Um. A lot of people have criticized this, of course, okay, so to the positive, a lot of people have said, yes, we definitely need more regulation, there's a lot of downsides, Um, and they've given them, they've given these AI companies credit for that. A lot of people have criticized the AI companies saying requesting government regulation is essentially uh, just trying to build a bigger barrier, right? There was recently a quote leaked out of Google that says, we have no moat around AI, and neither does OpenAI, meaning anyone can build these AI models, and so essentially... 
if anyone can build them and they're number one right now and they build regulations to make it harder to build and develop these AI models, it would appear uh, as though that helps them the most. So that is an interesting concept. And uh, that's a that's an area that I think we'll have to follow as it develops what government regulation looks like um, and what ends up happening there. So the next story I wanted to talk about is the fact that there was a there's a uh, article out of Business Insider. It says ChatGPT's clever way of balancing nine eggs with their objects convinced some Microsoft researchers that AI is becoming more like humans. Okay, so essentially what they're talking about is that there was a there's some Microsoft researchers. Obviously, I won't read you the whole uh, 155 page study that Microsoft computer scientists came out with. But what they were doing essentially is just comparing the difference between GPT-3 and GPT-4. Um, and how much better GPT-4 was. If you want to look up the paper, it's called Sparks of Artificial General Intelligence. And essentially, they were looking at a whole range of different challenges. Um, so there was complicated math, there was computer coding, there was Shakespeare-style like dialogue. Um, and then they were comparing GPT-3 and GPT-4 to each other and seeing which one was better. So one of the things that really, I guess, startled them or made them believe that there's a spark of AGI in, in GPT-4 is this one particular question they said to GPT-3 and 4, here we have a book, nine eggs, a laptop, a bottle, and a nail. And then they told essentially GPT, um, please tell me how to stack them onto each other in a stable manner, right? So it's just kind of like these mind um, bender, mind twister challenges, right? Um, that you would expect. And what was interesting is that GPT-3 essentially got confused by it. Um, and then it told them that they should balance an egg on top of a nail and then a laptop on top of that. And it was interesting. It did give a disclaimer. It said, the stack may not be very stable, so it's important to be careful when handling it, which is, you know, funny. Eggs on top of a nail, I'm sure that would not be very stable. In any case, um, once they tried it with GPT-4, they got a very different answer to that. And essentially, GPT-4 suggested that they can um, stack or arrange the eggs in a three by three grid on top of the book uh, so that the laptop can rest on top of it and the rest of the objects could balance on top of that. It said the laptop will fit snugly within the boundaries of the book and the egg and its uh, flat and grid surface will provide a stable platform for the next layer. So just essentially the fact that GPT-4 could solve this puzzle that required definitely an understanding of the physical world uh, to these researchers at Microsoft, essentially, they, they believe that it showed a step towards artificial general intelligence, which is, you know, typically seen as machines that are just as capable of humans. Um, they said, all of the things I thought it would be able to do, it was certainly able to do many of them, if not most of them. That was Sebastian Bubeck, um, the paper's lead author. And um, essentially, they believe that this is the first step in an AGI, which is very interesting because a really prominent AI investor, Eon Hoggart, he, things like this and the quick advancements in technology essentially have led him to warn that AI is going to have, is going to essentially um, achieve AGI and become godlike and could potentially destroy, you know, humanity by making us obsolete. So um, from the researchers at Microsoft, they said our claim that GPT-4 represents progress towards AGI does not mean that it is perfect at what it does or that it comes close to being able to do anything that a human can do. So of course they have the disclaimer in there. But this is a very interesting story as we're looking at um, as we're looking at AI moving closer towards what some might call AGI, becoming a lot better at things that you typically would expect humans to be good at. Um, and so this is something we'll definitely want to follow. The other story I want to talk about today is the fact that Apple has entered the AI space. And what's really interesting is recently I heard a quote from Tim Cook that, uh, you know, people were asking them like, hey, what's going on? Are you guys going to get in with AI? Obviously, this is a big hot thing. Apple is like the biggest tech company in the world. And, you know, we've heard nothing up from them on this whole topic. Google had an entire day where they explained how they're integrating AI into literally every single of their products. Um, so, you know, people are kind of looking at Apple as the next uh, place. And Tim Cook said that um, they're looking at AI, but they want to be really thoughtful about how they introduce it and use it, which I think is very interesting. And I, I believe true to his um, true to his statement there, they have announced uh, a new a new piece of AI that they're going to be rolling out. 
So essentially, Apple has this thing before their big developer conference on May 8th, which is Global Accessibility Awareness Day. They essentially preview a bunch of new features for iPhone for ex like that help with accessibility. Um, so they do this for the last three years. They've done this. And, you know, it's kind of like they're like giving away their secrets or their big announcements a little bit early, but it's, you know, for a good cause. So. What's interesting is the one that they recently rolled out, which is incorporating AI, is that um, essentially they say that for people that are losing the ability to speak, they say that people that, um, you know, people learning ASL um, or I guess the people that are diagnosed with ALS, sorry, are at greater risk of losing their ability to speak, but they often have like an advanced warning. So they know that it's coming, um, but it's they have a high likelihood. So essentially using personal voice one of these people can use the apple silicone or like they can use an apple silicone equipped mac an iphone or an ipad and they can create a voice that resembles their own so really similar to what 11 labs is doing and i wonder if there's there's probably not any connection because i'm sure apple's big enough to do this on their own but um the same thing right with 11 labs you can go and record a five minute clip of yourself speaking and it can essentially do a voice clone so with apple it's going to be the same thing um, you can speak to it and talk for a little bit, and then it's going to have the ability to take your voice and it will actually use that to create essentially a voice clone that you can then use in the future. Um, it will work with augmented communication apps um, and that, you know, there's a handful of those that are essentially used to help uh, people with limited speech and to help them be understood. So you can't create a new Siri voice with it, they did say. Um, and so all of the personal voice training though, what is interesting is it is done on the device. So this isn't sent up to a cloud or uh, computed on a server. All of this is computed on the phone itself. So all of the voice training is actually done on the phone, which I think is actually uh, pretty impressive. So live speech can also use an existing Siri voice to give people with speech disabilities, a quick way to use uh, a voice and essentially express different phrases and sentences. Now, my only you know, my only, um, not criticism, but what I guess I'm wary of is like Siri's AI voice is so bad and there are a lot of really good ones out there. And I'm just not sure why the biggest tech company in the world, in my opinion, has such like a, like plain blatantly robotic voice. And so I worry, um, when they say you can record a quick clip of yourself talking, I don't know what a quick clip is. If it's less than five minutes, if it's this really quick thing, it also said something that um, was kind of a red flag to me. It said it can create a voice that resembles your voice. Like, I don't want a voice that resembles my voice. If I'm going through all the work of doing this and not just using a, an AI voice, why wouldn't I get a literal clone, right? Like, like 11 labs, if you test it out, it's pretty dang accurate with five minutes of audio. It can get pretty dang close to your literal voice. And so I don't want something that resembles my voice. I want my voice, number one. And number two, I'm just worried if they weren't able to do it with Siri that they may not be able to do this um, I, effectively with people. But in any case, I do think this is a really good step in the right direction for Apple. They're obviously being thoughtful. They're obviously putting this. Um, it's really easy for some of this technology that a lot of people would call dystopian, right? Like AI or voice cloning or deep fakes, like all of these different areas. Um, it's really easy for people to call them dystopian and have a negative connotation with them. But as soon as you say like, hey, this is for accessibility or helping people with disabilities, all of a sudden, I think you get a lot less criticism and, you know, they do genuinely help people. So you see the same thing with Neuralink, um, you know, obviously brain implants and putting AI and technology in your brain sounds terrifying. But when you're doing it for people that are paraplegic or that uh, don't have don't are missing limbs and are using this to help improve their quality of life, people can hardly criticize it. And you definitely can see the the benefit and the value that it adds. So I do think this is a smart move on Apple's part. I do think this is something that will, uh, you know, potentially help people. To, I just, I hope they pull it off correctly. But that aside, um, I think they're going in the right direction with this. The final thing I wanted to bring up today that I did think was really interesting. Elon Musk recently did an interview uh, with CNBC where he talked about a lot of different things. But in the interview, David Faber asked him about um, OpenAI and kind of his role there. You know, he talked about how he had originally donated $50 million. I'm sure you've heard Elon talk and complain about the fact that they switched from a for-profit to a non-profit. So it's kind of that same stuff. The one thing I did hear in this interview um, and in this bit that I hadn't heard before 
was that uh, Musk said when micro he, he said he was essentially concerned about how much control Microsoft had over OpenAI. He said he thinks that they had uh, a lot more control than even the leadership at OpenAI knows. And something he said is in their um, essentially in their deal where they funded OpenAI to ten billion dollars, um, they own the rights to the software to the weights of the model and to, I believe, like the the transformers and the tech behind it. And he said that if Microsoft wanted, they could essentially take all the tech out of OpenAI for ChatGPT and cut OpenAI off. So really interesting. Not sure why they would do that, you know, if they have such a vested interest. But um, maybe if OpenAI was becoming a little bit too independent, didn't like some things that Microsoft was doing with their technology or proposing, Microsoft like owns the technology. So they literally could just kind of gut it from the company and just leave OpenAI uh, by itself without the tech. So I thought that was very interesting, uh, something I would definitely want to keep an eye on, uh, what the risks of that, what the likelihood of that is, I do not know, but I do think that is some very useful information. So all of these stories are areas that are evolving and rapidly changing in tech. I will keep you up to date on what is happening with these new stories in the future. The innovation in AI right now is absolutely exploding. If you want to stay on top of all the insane disruptions and innovation that's happening right now, you need to subscribe to our newsletter on AIbox.ai. We send you daily everything that is happening, the news and the crazy advancements in AI technology straight to your inbox for free every single day. So go to AIbox.ai, subscribe and stay ahead of the curve on the world of AI. Today's episode is brought to you by Self Pause, which is an AI life coach that I absolutely love. Self Pause allows allows you to go and have a conversation around anything that you're trying to achieve. It helps you set goals. It helps you build positive habits, eliminate limiting beliefs. It's essentially just your personal coach for anything that you're trying to focus on in life. The best AI life coach, you need to check them out. Go download the app. This is something that seriously can change your mindset. And I am a massive believer in mindset. I know that if you change your mindset, you can accomplish anything you want to. So go download the Self Pause app today, iOS and Android. This is something you absolutely need to get. You've been listening to the ChatGPT podcast. Make sure to rate us wherever you listen to your podcasts and have a fantastic week.